nothing personnel, kid. Hey there. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Um... I don't know why I'm making this video. I feel compelled to. I've been wanting to make it forever. But now that I have all this free time, I figured I might as well just get it out of the way, you know? It's just like... Be over and done with. So for those of you who do not know, I have a SoundCloud. Uh, username Optical Drop, uh, link in the description. Uh, I have been making music since 2015, and currently I am on uh, a hiatus with music. Uh, I've retired that part of my experimental artistic career, mostly because, well, for one thing, SoundCloud has informed me that I only have 28 minutes left of music to upload so that complicates things just just, just a little bit um, but also uh, it, the thing is the way that I make my music is that I go into um, well the first album I used logic logic pro X um, because I was out of school that had it uh, I don't personally have so I can't do it. Uh, but the other two after, and everything after that actually, um, everything after three months, whatever. Uh, everything after uh, was in GarageBand, which, interestingly enough, used the same exact loops. Okay then. Um, so, I, I would just take those loops, chop them together, and make a song out of them. That's basically what I did. Uh, which, fun fact, that actually is why the naming convention of every single album involves uh, going in a circle. Pretty neat, huh? But you didn't catch that. Uh, so, the other reason why I've just kind of stopped doing music is because I kind of ran out of good loops to use. <laughs> Like, I pretty much used them all, so if I just ended up recycling them, it'd be like, man, that, that sounded like that last song. You know, I, I don't want to wanna lead to that. Um, uh, but they were really fun to make. I had a lot of fun. It was frustrating at times, but, like, nothing impossible. Uh, I, I greatly enjoy uh, my time with music. It's just, you know, it's, it, it, it's ran its course, though, so that's all. Um... However, what I do want to do is spend this time to go over the music that I've made, uh, my process through making it, and just basically how I feel about every song I've made, which, spoiler alert, not all of them is very positive. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a lot is, but like for, the, for, for a good portion of it, it's like, eh. So let's just jump. The first thing I made was an album called Loopy. Uh, this was made back in 2015 during my senior year of high school, uh, which is crazy to think that it was only four years from from right now. It, it's official. I'm out of my prime. I don't know why I'm even bothering. Uh, this song. This album uh, hosts 12 different songs, uh, which... Thank you, Kevin. So yeah, there are 12 songs on this album, and four of them were actually made in GarageBand uh, before any of the rest of the songs were. Uh, everything else was made in Logic Pro X. Um, Except for one in particular, which I'll get into later. Um, which, I, I don't remember what program was used for that, but... It was an advanced one. So the first song is called A New Beginning. This, this song was made in GarageBand, and it is very... Very experimental, 
Like, it does not follow measures in the slightest. Um, I'm aware of this, at least now. But I still really like it. I really liked it uh, a lot when I made it, and I still like it now. Um, it, it's, it's very simple, it's very upbeat, it's very happy. It was the first song I really ever made. Outside of, like, humming to myself. It's the first song I've ever, like, recorded or whatever. And, uh, the, the Garage Band songs in, in this album, I actually use, like, instruments in, in the software. Uh, so, literally, like, that piano playing is just literally me holding my finger down and just sliding on occasion. Um, the drums were loops. Uh, literally everything else was loops. Um, yeah, I, I figured it was a good starting track for the album. Uh, and to this day, I still feel like it holds its own. Oh man, the next song right after that. Running Away From Robots. Let me just say this right now. In terms of pure views, or or plays, or whatever you want to call this stuff, it's my most successful song ever. I'm, I mean, all the songs off this album, like, on their own, are more successful than uh, entire albums later. <laughs> it's mostly because, like, I got to show it off to, like, a whole audience uh, at that school. Um, but that's besides the point. Uh, Running Away From Robots was the first song I made in Logic, and it shows. It, it's very, like, random feeling. Like, things just kind of happen. And I, I, I incorporate that philosophy in a more uh, art, artistic uh, fashion later down the line. Uh, but this, this one was probably the most insane one ever. But I, I do have to admit, I, I do like it. Um, it's not incredible or anything, but th there's something, there's something joyful about its simplicity. Um, like it, it's only a minute and a half long. Uh, it's not that crazy of a song, but I think what made me feel, I think the reason why I have a personal attachment to it is just like not only just because it was the first one I made. But because once I made it, I realized, oh man, I can make dubstep. I can just, like, make the music I love to listen to. It's like, it was so cool. It literally sounds like an excision song. Because the loops used were, like, probably excision-inspired or something. But, like, man, just that drum pattern at the end. Ooh! Uh, I, I still... It, it holds a soft spot uh, in my heart, just somewhere. Um, so, that's how I feel about that song. Very nice. The next song is Tribute. Uh, th this one's interesting, because this was... This was my attempt at trying to create a story out of music. It, create a story within a song. So, my interpretation of how um, this song operates, basically, uh, the idea is like, you have this instant, uh, this instant where someone, uh, it, like, think like Shadow of the Colossus, where it's like, you have this dead girl, and then this boy just goes around killing a bunch of things and selling his soul to the devil just to bring her back. The way I see the song is like, someone did something, they screwed up, and now someone else has to sacrifice themselves as a tribute in order to make things right again. Um, and the whole process of the song is like, the emotional uh, swaying of having to deal with that reality. Um, and I feel like, I, I feel like the song holds up on its own as a song, but what I 
especially love, is just how I was able to um, uh, make that story uh, very competently. Uh, I still stand by it. I, I see my music more as works of art rather than like full on like dance hits or whatever. Like they're not meant to be played at the club. Let's be real. Uh, you get fired. <laughs> but uh, I I want them to be taken like um, more as interpretations and experiences rather and, and like something you could sit down and listen to rather than just like have on in the background. Or whatever. You know, it, it's like some. Uh, like, I try to make my music as something to chew on. Hype is another interesting case where I try to incorporate story into song. Um, basically, the idea is like... Well, first of all, I was just trying to make a pretty chill house track. Um, so, here's the concept that I had for, for this. Um, like, every time I explain this to someone, everyone's like... Are you projecting or something? I'm like, no, I'm not. It, it, it's not like specifically tailored to anything in particular. It's supposed to like represent an experience. So just keep that in mind that it, it, this is just um, uh, what the thought process behind w why everything is the way it is for this song. Um, the song is called Hype. It is supposed to be a song that goes through the motion of what happens when you have misplaced excitement in an upcoming product. Whether it be like the next installment of a book series, or the next season of your favorite television show, or um, this upcoming game from a notorious director, a developer, or whatever. Um... You know, stuff like that. Just like, oh, this is exciting. <laughs> like, why do you think there's a fucking cash register noise in the song? Uh, and it's just like, you start out going through your, your day, and then just like, yeah, and, and then everyone gets excited. And everyone's going, whoa, nuts, this is crazy, it's amazing. And then everyone goes out to experience that thing, and then they take it in. And like, you know, then there's that moment where it's like, it, it, it gets slower, the song gets slower, and it's just that slow realization, wow, that was bad, that was not what I wanted whatsoever, huh. You know, think of like the experience with um, maybe like the Star Wars prequels or something, like episode one, whatever. Um, so it was, that, that was that. I think, I think it holds up. I think it's good. I think it's okay. I think the story is more interesting than the song itself, personally. Next up is 8-Bit Wizard. Uh, yeah, this, this was another, this is another garage band song. Uh, fun fact, back when, um, uh, the garage band songs were made, um, I was stuck between 8-Bit Wizard and Autumn Day, another song that'll come up later, and yeah, spoiler alert, that's a rough that song. Um, I've always been confused as to which one I named what, so, like, they were both kind of, like, they were, to me, they were like, oh, they could, these names could work for both of them, so which one do I go with? Like, this one I, I picked to go with 8-Bit Wizard just because... Um, you know, it, it's more electronic sounding, it's more like video gamey. Like, the thing I think of is like that guy who gives you the sword in Legend of Zelda, like the first one. Dangerous to go alone and whatever. Fun fact! If you pay attention to 8 bit Wizard, you'll actually notice that it uses a similar sound hook to that of Usher's Up in This Club, which I did not know about until someone pointed it out to me. And I went, oh, neat. He made that song Garage Band. Good for him. <laughs> they don't have that sound effect anymore. 
on the app, so I, I, I got a, a unique sound for myself. Uh, so there's that. You're gonna find that the Garage Band songs are very simple. Nothing crazy about them. Uh, I think it's still a chill, relaxing tune. I, I, I don't see an issue with it. Like, I'll, the thing is, is like the Garage Band songs I only included because I legit thought they were good. Uh, there were two that I made that I did not put on because I thought they were shit. So, uh, yeah, that was that song. Yes, not in this house is probably the dumbest, craziest amalgamation of noises that I've ever compressed into a song. And I sort of love it. <laughs> the concept behind this song, which I think works better in theory than practice, was like, I want to make this house track. Like, I want to make this track. It's like, it sounds like it's going to be like a house beat, like a generic, unchallenging house beat. And it just like gets progressively like more built up. It's like, oh yeah, this so it's like new really house like, and then it just like hits you with industrial reality and something turns into a nasty dubstep track. Um, but I did not understand BPM at the time, so it just kind of turned into like a syncopated drum beat house track. Literally, it's just like four different skits put into one song. I I don't know. There's a part of me that charmingly adores it, but another part of me understands that it's trash. I don't know. Maybe I'm just biased. <laughs> At best, I think it's cute. At worst, I think it's just not good. Tempos was the other uh, garage band song. It's probably the, the dumbest one out of all them that I decided to put on. Tempos is one of those songs that I just dicked around on the keyboard and thought it was legitimate enough to warrant a release to public interest. I think it's neat. The only loop in it is just the drums. Like, everything else was just me sliding my finger on the keyboard. Just like, not even like, it's just like... <laughs> Um, I don't even think they have those smart instruments anymore, or at least not in the same way. Fun fact, Tempos was actually longer. Um, that little skip before the beginning, um, I cut out a good minute worth of it because I was just like, you know, it was like building up and then it just disperses and then the song actually starts. That buildup was longer and it wasn't as satisfying. <laughs> so I cut it where, like, in half. Uh, just so it would fit better. And it worked out better than I thought. I thought it would be more noticeable, but no, it. it uh, I hit it on the money. <laughs> do, do I look like a guy that knows what he's doing? Literally, the fact that this album sounds as good as it does is complete luck. <laughs> yeah, it's that's it. it. It's a weird song. But just like not in this house, I have an awkward soft spot for it. Hybrid Proof is interesting. It was the last song I made for the album, and it got to a point where I'm like, oh man, I don't know what to name this. I've run out of names. I can confirm. It is a Linkin Park reference. Uh, there is proof it. I know, it's cringe, just get over it. <laughs> In hindsight, the name actually kind of works because it's like, it's this melodic, pleasant house track that transitions into a dubstep track. I, I feel like this was a better implementation of what I attempted to do with Not In This House. It's like, not as ovatingly blunt. 
Is that the word overtly? Overtly. I don't know, I like it. A lot of my songs just kind of unconventionally just do whatever the hell they want. They, they, don't, they don't really form any sort of structures. It's like, oh yeah, we're doing this now. A a at least in this album. Off Pudding. It's probably my favorite song on this entire album. It It's... It's the slowest one, it's like 60 BPM. But everything was the same BPM because I didn't know how to change it at the time, so I, I was just stuck with whatever setting was left on the computer. And one day I just opened it up and it was just at 60. Uh, and that's when I realized, oh, I fell in love with this pacing. There, there's something so hypnotically entrancing about 60 beats per minute. I don't know why, but it's beautiful to me. Um, and this song feels like a journey. Like, it's off-putting mostly just because of that middle section where it's just like, you know, again, melodic, and then trumpet, brass. <laughs> um, there's one section near the beginning where it's like, the song's obviously starting, so I, like, I would not have had, the, I, if, like, the trumpets weren't there, uh, at the beginning the whole time and I put them there and I'm like I I'd edit that out during the transition near the beginning um, if I were making it now uh, but it's fine for what it is uh, I, I severely love this track just because of like the craziness that just goes on with it I don't really have much else to say I just really like it Autumn Day the last garage band song I think you can kind of see why I thought this could work as 8-Bit Wizard, um, but it's way more of an autumn day, uh, just because, like, it's way more chill, it's way more peaceful, and the electronic sounds are not as bit-sounding. I like this track. It's chill. It's a nice time. I, I, I just feel like I'm just sitting on a park bench in the middle of autumn. Wait. Waited for is okay. <laughs> wait, wait, th that piano bit at the beginning was just like, I have this tune in my head, it's the only thing I can play on the piano. I don't want to forget, I want to use it in a song somehow. And then I did it and I didn't think, hmm, maybe I should change how it sounds by giving it uh, effects or something. Nope, just raw, straight up piano. Uh. It really, I could not, for the life of me, find any fucking loops that could mesh with that at all. Like, it's called Waited For, because I've been waiting for this chance to use that combination of notes in that way for so fucking long. And, like, it could have came out better. And then the rest of the song is just like, all right. It's nothing highly offensive. It, it just like I don't know. I, I feel like there was some lost potential, but at the same time, it's nothing offensively bad. Yeah. The next song is a bonus track. That's just what it is. Um, it is summertime, and I really only produced it. I, I really only like helped with chopping everything together, making everything sound as good as it can. All of the instruments were played by my friends at the school, um, which was uh, Long Island High School of the Arts. Or Lisa, for short. Uh, God damn, I haven't seen any of those people since then. Uh, they kind of broke ties with me, probably because high school was an awkward time for me, and no one wanted to be my friend. Honestly, I, I have no one else but myself to blame. I was an asshole. Okay, not an asshole, but like, who, who'd want to hang out with me?
I think, no, I know this was a song I had put the most amount of effort into. We did like multiple recordings of each instrument, which each one was done by a different student, by the way. Like the bass uh, was done on keyboard by, uh, uh, I believe his name was Richard. And I forget everyone else's name. I'm. It's been so long, and no one's kept up with me. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, there was one on sax, uh, vocalist. Uh, I was probably uh, closest friends with. Everyone there was super nice and chill, and I appreciate my time with them. Please do not hate me. I definitely like the way it came out, and I definitely wanted to share it with the world. And I know it doesn't fit on this album at all. That's why I consider it a bonus track. Um, and I know Summertime is like the most overused song for any vocalist to like try and uh, sing. But you know what? They were singing at the, like I just told her, sing whatever song you want and then I'll just produce it. And she sung that and came out great. That was loopy. Overall, relatively good. It holds up really well. I, I it's not, the best stuff I've ever made. In fact, being the earliest, it's probably some of the corniest, but honestly, I've made worse. I've definitely made worse um, tracks than all of these. So, if anything, I'm glad if any of the albums were the most seen, at least this one was the most consistently good. And so the next album, wait, we're not talking about the next album yet. Loopy Remix. I had um, some time at the end of the year and I needed to do something, justify my time working on music. I literally had nothing to do. And since I already finished the album, I was just like, What if I just remix them all together? Uh, so I did. So I, I think Tribute and Off-Putting were the only two songs that were of a different um, BPM. Everything else was like 140 or 120 or something. I don't know. Um, so they, everything mixed with... Like, Off-Putting had to be changed to a different uh, BPM in order to mix at all. Uh, something I was unsuccessful at being able to do with um upcoming one that I'll get to later. <sighs> Overall I think it's cute. I think it's fine. E everything just kind of meshes well anyway, just because they were all the same BPM. And I and I think I did a clever job at being able to incorporate everything. So yeah. Alright, next album time. Once More is a very interesting case. Um, the artwork was hand-drawn and uh, photographed by me. And it was taped onto uh, the door to my room, uh, the outside of it. And... Um, yeah, the, the drawing, the drawing is important to me, mostly because, um, I don't want to get into why, because that's a little personal, but, um, the purpose behind it was, at least to the name, was I want to give myself one more chance with music. I want to make another album. Because, like, I was like, there's no way I'm making more music. I'm not making a fucking garage band. Then I found out they have the same loops, and I'm like, whoa, boy! <laughs> it, it's a, a lot more of a limiting uh, program, so I wasn't able to do as crazy stuff in it that I was able to do with uh, Logic, like, adjust things and say, or at least I couldn't figure it out. Um... It's, it's not as intuitive. That's just the thing. Uh, 
between free or paid for software. That's kind of how it goes. Um, and the art itself was, uh, uh, it, it was a way to tell myself, yeah, I'll give it one more shot. Why not? It's just music after all, you know? Um, yeah, and I, again, I don't want to divulge too much into that. Again, it's, it's just a little personal. Um, but that was the basis behind the concept of making this album. Um, which I later then realized, once more, through the seeing a pattern. And that just became the formidable archetype behind the philosophy and concept of making the album titles. It was totally on purpose, I swear. Welcome Back encompasses everything behind the philosophy of why this album was made to begin with. And oh my fucking god, this is probably one of my favorite tracks ever made by me. It's probably the best song on the whole freaking album. It, it was around some time in between like the last album and this one where I started to really get into drum and bass. Like I was always like really like kind of into it, but now but it was at that point where I'm like, ooh yeah, that's like another genre I really like. It's like some about like 170 BPM is just like chill, nice, cool. That was the slickest, chillest track I've ever made. I'm so proud of it. Uh, if you check out any song off of this entire album, make it welcome back. It, it was, it, it's meant to be like a welcome back for me into music, but also welcome back for you listening all nine of you <sighs> looming was my attempt at making traditional dubstep like an actual legit dubstep track and I think I think I ended up making something Unintentionally, um, my attempt was to like make an actual dubstep track and see how it went. Now it stands as a testament as to what every fucking uh, it, it's literally as vanilla dubstep as you get, and it's I, I see it now as like the epitome of just like it, it's not generic dubstep, like it, it's not that like overdone if anything it's like we're running away from robots sounded like a decision this one's more that sick and um i don't know the drop feels a little disappointing and repetitive um and i kind of fucking hate it because of that like a part of me actually really hates this song but i don't uh, another part of me thinks This is ironic art. <laughs> this is a song I ironically like. You know? It's like, yeah, this is like dubstep, man. Yeah, it's like... People tell me they, they like it. Don't, don't, don't. Don't like me. But like, at the same time, it's also the most listened to track on the whole album, so fuck if I know what's actually good. <laughs> Y'all a bunch of SHIT! <laughs> That's my thoughts around it. It's fine. But, like, on a good day, it's like yeah, that's me. But on, on a bad day, it's like one of the Worst songs I've probably made. Not the worst, 
just one first. After my love for off-putting with its 60 BPM, I made it a mission to just make at least three tracks on this album that were that uh, pacing. Awkward is one of them. Awkward is a track that's supposed to be um, awkward in every sense of the way, but at the same time still be an enjoyable, fun experience. It's definitely up there, one of the better tracks on this album. Like, entirely. It's, um, like, like, measurements are supposed to sound like completely distorted. Even the spelling of the name, like, there's, there's no vowel. It's just like purposefully spelled and everything. Um, I, I feel like that's a little on the nose, but mm, the track itself is nice. I feel like the pacing is good. I feel like it doesn't spend too long being a big boy sound in the middle and then like the build up throughout the rest of it I feel like is very well paced um, again I see these more as like art artistic experiences to sit down and chill to rather than like club hits yeah that's why people love Blue so much it's more of like an easy to mix club track it's not a good one um <laughs> again you'll get fired but, yeah, I don't know. I, I like this one. It's good. Disjointed! Uh, so while uh, Welcome Back was my attempt at, like, liquid uh, D&D, Disjointed was pretty much the equivalent, like, more on the heavy side. I, I was trying to make, like, drum bass, but, like, more, uh, less technomatic, more noisy. You know what I mean? Uh, I like it. It's not too long. It does what it does well. It gets the job done. It's neat. I like it. Um, yeah, it, it's like better than above average, but not like amazing, you know? one of those 8 out of 10 sort of songs. I'm not gonna rank these songs, by the way. I, I, don't, I don't want to subject them to a number. Not that I couldn't, it's just like, I don't want that to be the takeaway. I, I want my thoughts across it, uh, across it to be what you think. Synchronize is an okay song, and I'm moving on. Okay, um, look, look, look! Synchronize, instrumentally, is fun. The fact is mostly satisfying, but I, more often than not, refuse to acknowledge this song because I can't sing, and that was my attempt at singing. And I structured the entire song around the vocals, at least near the middle. So, I couldn't just like, not in, and I made them as good as I could, but man, I just cannot sing, and I learned that the hard way. Newfound appreciation uh, for any vocalist, ever, at all. Uh, good for you. My music teacher told me that I had perfect pitch. The issue with that is that I could not tell you what note is what letter, so that's an issue. I, I could, uh, by hearing a voice, copy it, like, some of the, I know, it, you know, whatever, but that, I, I feel like those are the two definitions of perfect pitch, and I only have one of those. It's not the one. Moving on. Exaggerated is neat. It, it, it's really neat. I I don't know. It's a uh, a song where it's another issue of me trying to make a story out of a song. And like it, it's weird. You can tell it's drum and bass, but it's also like like got a weird 
beat pattern. It's got a weird drums, drum pattern to it. Uh, it's, it's almost kind of trap sounding. I, I kind of forgot the song existed, but man, I I like it. It's good. Uh, probably, uh, probably a little more underappreciated than it should be. So the whole concept behind the story of this song is just like, you know, you're getting up in arms about a thing, you're getting exaggerated, and then just like near the end, you just kind of realize, oh, what a waste of time to fuel any energy into. Damn, I just wasted two minutes. Sense this. You got the idea. That's the basic gist of it. I'm not gonna get into another fucking fairy tale about this one. It, it's a little more simple. Betrayal is the worst song that I've ever made, and I fucking hate it with a passion. It was the last track I made. I realized, oh damn. I didn't make any Sad Boy tracks like I did with Tribute on the last album. I should do that. Uh, sad Boy Hour went into full effect, probably too hard of an effect, and it kind of became this depressing written track that's just emo fueled. And I couldn't backpedal because I did not know how. Uh, it's also repetitive as fuck, so. That's also neat. Skip this one if you if you want. I, I would not blame you. Okay, I know I said Welcome Back was probably <laughs> uh, my favorite song on this album. And it probably is. But if there were um, a tie for it, which there probably is, it'd be with Mixture. Mixture is amazing. It is so beautiful and just satisfying and just like, oh, that crescendo styled ending. Oh, it's the way it builds up. Beautiful. Peace to resistance. It, it, it feels like lightning in a bottle, this song. It's just like, all these different sounds and crazy elements, like, at least with Welcome Back, it's just, like, the same tune, just, like, shipped it around and, like, made to sound, like, beautiful liquid, but this is just, like, way more complicated. Uh, had a lot more effort put into it, uh, which you can obviously tell with, like, just the way I was just shifting shit around. That one, not to say it was easy, but it was, like, way more streamlined. Not as many layers. Um, but yeah, it was just, uh, it's up there as one of my favorite tracks that I've ever made. Period. Uh, yeah, good 10 out of 10. Minutes. I said I wouldn't, damn it! Why you Choose Love is a song made by someone who has very rarely experienced love in his life. Uh... I don't know. My philosophy around... Love and, uh, uh, like just, I see it more as like a trust, a highly gifted trust, like the highest form of trust you give to someone, as well as the highest form of appreciation uh, and acceptance. Uh, if I had to define love, that's how I see it. And why I choose love is, um, it, it, it's two things to me. First is, um, it's a it's a experience that goes through the motions of what it's uh, of why love uh, exists. It's really the only track I've ever touched on the theme of. Again, I, I have no experience with it, so um, you know every, every other form of media has love incorporated into some capacity, so. Why oversaturate that even further? Um, I don't know. I, I felt like this song, like it wasn't my intention, but uh, it ended up encapsulating that feeling that I feel, that, that I assume. 
many people feel with when it comes to um, love and relationships where it's just like fall in love uh, and, and then you go through this it's like you know this motion where it's like yeah it's like, yeah this is not the story of the song uh, the story is there's not really a story it's more of just like an emotional roller coaster in general um not even it's just like it, it's like picked up you, you, you get put in this position where it's like oh i'm the bad boy i don't need love i can live without it i don't need it anymore <laughs> i don't don't ask me why i did that <laughs> but then you come back around uh falling right back in love again basically uh, the conclusion for the song is that I don't know. Love, we choose love because it's it's got this feeling. Even though at the time I haven't really experienced it that much, I've always known love has this overwhelming feeling. This like thing that like only cinema can portray perfectly. Even music just sounds shallow and hollow like even like the most watered down movie really gets the idea of like what love is because even if the movie and the love doesn't make sense love doesn't always make sense at least I assume the other way I see this song is I just think to myself what would happen if I went to 200 BPM and that's how this song ended up so fucking insanely fast. <laughs> Despite being a perfect five minutes. Yeah. That, that's it. <laughs> it. It was mostly an experiment first and story of love second. So there you go. You know how I said... Betrayal is the worst song I've ever made. Well, Together doesn't even count as a song. It's a fucking nightmarish mess. <laughs> Probably, it's the reason why uh, the album after this did not come with any sort of compilated Together. It's basically the equivalent of the Loopy remix. It's just a remix of all the songs clashed together. All the different BPMs and all. But under one BPM, well, I did an average BPM of them all. And, uh, a lot of the mixing works, a lot of it doesn't. Um, they just sound awkward. Like, <laughs> uh, Why Choose Love was so fast that hearing it in here is just like, does not feel right. And, like the ones that were slower are just way too fast. It's, it's night. If anything, the best thing about this track is that it proved to me that exaggerated sounds amazing, slowed down, so there's that. Also, eight minutes, way too long. Just, goddamn. Bad song. And then we got one last track. Running away from reboots uh, was the uh, VIP remix of Running Away From Robots. I looked out and found the exact same loops that I used for that song. And I went, oh, oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, I didn't find every single one, so I couldn't recreate it, but I want to take that song and turn it into the most epic, saga-sounding, encapsulating moment ever. And it's probably the song that I put the most amount of effort into, if you don't include Summertime. <laughs> there were so many specific nuances that I just had to, like, make. Perfect, and I think I got it as close to perfect as I possibly can. And oh my god, just the ebbs and flows of 
everything. Oh, it works so well. It's so perfect. I love everything about this truck. Is it as good as Awkward or Welcome Back? No. No, it is not as good as that. But it is pretty damn close. Um, it's a... It's a personal favorite of mine, and I highly recommend that over the original, personally. Not to say the original is obsolete, but uh, like it stands on its own, in its own cute little way. But man, this one's like, this is how a sequel's done, baby. Then after that, Hi, I'm Ghost had a remix contest, and I just, I, I've done some remixes of some songs if the artist gives out, like, the stems or whatever just to be just to experiment just see try to take their sound and try to see what I can do to make it sound different but, but like not that different my philosophy around remixing is like just taking their sounds chopping them up in a way that's like still faithful to the original but like kind of its own thing like a reinterpretation which is what a remix should be but at the same time, I also acknowledge that I do not have the production skills in order to make it sound as great as I can. In fact, the actual winner of that contest did exactly what I hoped to do in a remix, just like with actual professionalism and knowledge of how to make music. But like, this is the thing. Um, I took piano lessons in like third grade or whatever. I, I took them for a few years when I was young, but I stopped cold turkey because I just was not having fun. I did not care. Like I didn't feel like I was learning anything. So I stopped it. I don't know how to play a single instrument. And I'm making music. So keep that in mind that I'm not musically inclined in the slightest. I, uh, the, the best I can do is critique. Like, I would later eventually go on to do remixes of uh, uh, High Noon by uh, The Brig. And... Miss You by Fox Stevenson. I want to try to do like a like a obnoxious rhythm take. I think it might be serious. Um, but we're gonna ignore those for the sake of this. Um, so let's talk about that last album, Roundabout. It's kind of awkward. It's like one of the last instances I used that old that old logo. Um. It, it was like sometime after that um, that I just incorporated the new one. So it's a little awkward that that's my last album. Oh well. So, fun fact the reason it's called Roundabout is because I want to keep it the theming of like circling in a loop. But, like, also there's an inside joke about me and a personal friend of mine uh, about roundabouts. I don't even remember what. The context of the joke is it's just the joke is roundabout now I, 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 don't, I don't know I don't know regardless roundabout this probably has the most consistently good music out of all of them I feel it's literally just like like after the last one I'm like I can't think. and then just one summer I was just like bored so I'm just like yeah fuck it <laughs> literally this album exists because of just a eh mentality. Just a why not? Might as well. Not much to go out. It, it, it's, it just ended up existing. Modern Mist is a, like ooh, what a song to start out with. Mm, simple. This song literally uh, I, I think it was like the first one I made. Really the the uh, first songs on albums are like the first ones like, I, I guess, I don't know. I guess it just feels right. But they also work as good op openers in general. Uh, the beginning of the song itself, I was like, trying to make it like, one measure, two measures, it's just like, I, I ended up doing it one way and now I kind of want to do it the other way. But sync or whatever no, he's going nuts but it's like whatever it, did, it felt too long the other way and I'm like 
screw measures. I'm experimental. That's what I do. And now I'm just so conflicted on which way that I should have gone about it. And I know it probably doesn't make sense what I'm saying, but it's just like, it's, it's the beginning. It's just like odd number instead of even number. I, I'm not getting into it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, simple, chill, nice, pleasant. I enjoy. It. Probably one of my favorites on the album. It would it would be my favorite. Is it if it wasn't for the song that would come immediately right after? Steaming Chili is my favorite song. Period. I I know I've probably said that about like another one. I don't care. I don't care. This shit I've listened to way more often than any other song I've made. It is by far the best song I have produced. The best song I've ever composed together. It's genius. It's absolute genius. Um, it's just the emotional flowing throughout the whole track. It's just perfect and beautiful. Just, ugh. Love it so goddamn much. Mm. This is the peak of my musical prowess. Like, this, it's only just downhill from here. Like, and I know that, and that's partially why I, I just haven't made anything else. It's just like, nothing can compare to that. I call it steam and chili, because it's supposed to be a, like a pun. It's like steaming, insinuating that it's hot, but chili, insinuating that it's cold. You thought it was the food. No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of how I feel about this track. It's like, it's hot and cold. It's just like, perfect maneuverment around different temperatures while encapsulating into a single solitary sound in a way that is just so satisfying that I, I nerd out and fanboy over something I made that should be egotistical, but I don't see it that way. It's just, I, I don't know. I really, really like it. Beautiful. Transition's just like, it's supposed to sound like a transitional song, but it's also itself transitioning into another uh, mood. Yeah. Very abruptly, I'm aware, but I also don't care. Yeah, by the way, spoiler alert, uh, the idea behind this album was I wanted to make a lot of them 60 BPM, because I've just fallen in love with that measurement, but I also ended up making a, a lot more D&B as well. Not as much, but as the last one, but still like uh, a good amount. This is one of those DMB tracks that's just like, yeah, it's whatever. I don't know. I think I was just stuck with what to do with stuck. I, I, don't, even, I don't even think that's why I called it stuck. I think I just called it that because it just feels like oh, you're stuck in this awkward of a predicament. It's just like, I don't know. It, it feels weird, but I kind of like it. It's like, um,. Uh, it, it's just a little all over the place, but um, conceptually, I think it just works. I don't know. It, it's one of those tracks where it's just like, yeah, it's pretty neat. It's cool. It's whatever. The Gamble is called The Gamble, not because it sounds like some sort of Western sort of theming thing, but also because... It was a gamble on whether or not it would sound good. Because imagine, like, some cowboys playing poker, and then their stakes are high, but then suddenly aliens come out of nowhere and start shooting around, and then you kill the aliens because you're gunslingers. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss for words of how to describe this song. It just kind of exists as its own weird little experiment. It was just a complete gamble on whether or not it would sound good at all. That's really just it. That's the whole philosophy behind it. I really like Confidence Acquired. Um, I can understand it getting a, a little repetitive, but man, 
that beat's just like, mm, 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 mm. It's, it's just like, it, it flows really, really well, and I, and I, and I like it for that. Um, it's a, it, it, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of fun, it's just something to bob your head to. It's not terribly long either, so, uh, I don't think it overstays its welcome. It's that same mentality with Modern Mist, where it's just like, um, yeah, it's just a beat that goes on. It's supposed to be like catchy and whatever, but it's like a completely different feel. Um, like I was really like trying to incorporate more um, ongoing sounds with this album. Uh, it, it's weird. It's either I commit to a to a single pattern. Or I change it up halfway through and then incorporate them both together. <laughs> That's just kind of how this album came to be. Uh, backwards is weird because, um, like, the song's name is pronounced backwards, but it's spelled backwards. I don't know why, but um, SoundCloud capitalized the S just because first letter. I, it's not supposed to be. I, I want to make that clear. It's an okay song. It, it, it's nothing special. It just feels like three different tracks in one song. And they just like... I don't know. They flow together alright. Eh. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's far from the best. Inspiration for the future. This is a song that's supposed to be like uplifting, inspiring, um, meant to make you feel good. And, and, and then it's just like, ooh yeah, they hit me with that. Ooh, out of nowhere. Mm. Uh, and then again, they both get reincorporated together uh, to work together, uh, like opposites working together uh, for a similar goal. That last part is a bit of a stretch. Literally, it, it, I, I just make these songs and I name them afterwards. Uh, or, or halfway through, depends. Um, this one I just named it that because I didn't know what else to call it. I figured it sounded cool. Yeah, I like this song. It's up there. It's good. It's pretty good. Really good. Firelight. Uh, it's one of those songs I rarely look back on. But every time I do... I don't know why I, I keep forgetting about this song. I think it's just because... I don't know. I, I think... Uh, Welcome Back kind of stole the spotlight as being the best melodic D&B song I've ever made. But man, damn, this one's pretty up there. Um, just, mm. I, I think I'm best at melodic drum and bass for some reason. I think it's just really easy to make. But man, ooh, just the, uh, like this is the most consistent of a, of a tonal narrative I could get. It's just, oh, such a romantic piece of shit. I love this so much. Um, and like, again, like, it's romantic, but it's not like focused on being about love, you know? Uh, it, it's just like chill. I dig it. I like it. Cool. The factory is interesting. I, I sort of canon, like uncanonically, semi-canonically view this song as like a sequel to the whole Running Away From Robots series of songs, where it's just like, oh, it's an insane universe or something. Um, Again, it's just me making a story out of this bunch of music. And yeah, again, it's like three different songs put into one. But uh, near the end, they all incorporate into each other, bring about a grand reveal that they were all working together at the same time. Um, and it's supposed to be like mysterious and eerie. It's just like nothing you can do will work or whatever. I really like this song. Well, it's because it's not 8 minutes, it's 7.52. Ah, I gotcha together. Way better. <laughs> not really. Um, 
it's a good track. I feel like it's the perfect finisher song for all these albums. It's just, it just feels so conclusive. Um, and I don't think I'd have it any other way. Will I ever make any more albums? Well, considering that SoundCloud has informed me that I only have uh, so many minutes worth of music left to upload, I doubt it. Maybe like a four-track EP just to take the piss. Maybe something like, um, like Full Stop, the EP. Just because I can't loop anymore. Because SoundCloud won't let me. Unless I get like premium or something. Um, but we'll see. Um, I don't want to be definitive or conclusive because that's very, it's very cut and dry. But I really don't see myself making music in the future. It's not an impossibility, but it's very unlikely. Regardless, I've had a wonderful experience with creating this music, and I hope you find some enjoyment uh, out of these songs as well. I, did, I didn't make them for myself, you know, I sort of kind of did for a lot of them, but I, I put them on SoundCloud for the sake of sharing it with people across the world. And people have been downloading these tracks, so people seem to really, which by the way, all these songs are free to download. The only songs that you can't download are like the remixes of other people's tracks, because I think there'd be like some sort of copyright issue that I do not want to get involved with um, so I'm not gonna risk that uh, but th they're still available to stream uh, and view uh, to listen to for free completely I think if you have like SoundCloud Go or whatever you should be able to download directly anyway so there's that um, I'm not sponsored by SoundCloud or anyone, by the way. It's just the easiest, most well-known place to upload music. That has been my experience with music. Uh, thank you very much for listening to what I had to say. I know it's a bit of a random video, and it's probably not something that everyone's going to be really into, but again, I just feel compelled to let it be known this exists, and this is how I feel. Uh, if you want to follow me on SoundCloud, just in case if anything else does come out, like another remix or potential music, uh, definitely give it a follow. Um, I usually make videos on here to, to indicate whenever I make like a big album or whatever. At least I did with the last two. Um, but like when it comes to like individual like remixes, it's just like they're their own thing on there. There's no point in making a whole video about it. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. Uh, if you made it this far in the video and didn't skip, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your time. And I'm very concerned why you would watch me about something this very specifically niche. But regardless, uh, I've wasted enough of your time. Uh, get out of my house. Not in this house.